Northwest Jeepcast here. Oh, we got a fun project. We're going to be installing a super hitch, Magnum. Magnum, Gary. From who? From Torque Lift. From Torque Lift. This is an amazing product, but before we get into kind of all the components here, Gary, where were you before doing all this? Like, what was your towing capacity, and what could we do from this bumper pole? Well, the bumper pole, so the, the Ram came with a uh, Class 5 uh, integrated welded on uh, hitch, right? And it's rated to 17,000 pounds of pole and 1,700 pounds of uh, tongue weight. 1,700 pounds, pounds of right. tongue weight. That's, that's what it's rated at. And so we've been able to do a double trailer before, yes. but it was a slightly smaller double trailer and it only held a JK and a well, Cherokee. It was, it was a 16K gross weight trailer. Okay. And we were right. roughly 16K. Right. So pro so we couldn't really fit both JKs. <laughs> that was in a there. King of the Hammers. We did a Grand Cherokee and a JK. Right. And we, sent, we sent that set up down to King of the Hammers. And you had a weight distribution set up nope. on there. Oh, no, that was just straight bumper. No weight. Straight bumper. Oh, and we've, got, we've got airbags on board. So yeah. we were able to adjust it out. All right. So it got you to 16,000. But now we're going to probably 19,000. Because we're throwing two JKs, two JKs on a trailer. Big trailer. This bigger trailer is a thousand pounds heavier. Um, so instead of a 16K, it's a 24K. Oh, wow. Max trailer. Wow. So it's a little beefier. Right. But because we're throwing that extra weight on, we need to beef up. Yeah, we, we're beyond the, the hitch. And so we found this torque lift product. Yeah, a lot of guys yeah, were familiar with it around here. Um, We'll talk a little bit more about the double double. Well, and you, you said a second. moment ago that 1,700 pounds on the on the tongue, but oh, sorry, on, on the on the hitch here. 1,700 on a tongue going down on the hitch. Right. Or 17,000. And what what do we think we're going to be with two Jakes, two JKs? Probably 2,000. So 2,000. So maybe, that, maybe that's, slightly over. So that's kind of one of the reasons we thought, hey, we should probably. Well, both. Right. I mean, we're going to pull more. Yeah. I mean, we're just pushing this past its maximum capacity. All right. So Torque Lift makes this great product. Super Hitch Magnum, so we can beef everything up. Why don't we explain these components really quick? There's four different pieces here. Yes. Uh, we got the Super Hitch itself, which is a couple brackets that, that are on the frames, and and, uh, and the additional two-inch uh, receiver. Receiver. So that's going to bolt up underneath the existing receiver you already have. That's right. So they they have different kinds for different rigs. So the Rams, these are welded on, and they're a class five. So what they're going to do is augment this system. Oh my god, this thing is beef, Gary! What's this thing? Well, that's a shank. Goes into the receiver. Goes into the, but it goes into both. The receiver receives this. Right, and that's a two inch upper, two inch lower, which we're going to run. So, so uh, the Magnum, the, the truly big boy 30K one, has a two and a half inch upper uh, shaft. Wow. Right, but we, that's beyond what we're going to be doing. You, that's for if you're using their uh, Everest weight distributor. Oh yeah, so so this this whole setup is going to get us a twenty thousand pounds. Twenty thousand. But if you want more, what can you do? You can get an Everest weight distributing. Yeah. And with that, they send a different shank, so it's going to have a two and a half inch upper. It's going to go instead of three quarter inch bolts going through the shank, it'll go to one inch bolts going through the shank. It's huge, right? It's going to have it'll come with you know uh, uh, an adapter that's designed to take thirty thousand, not twenty thousand pounds. Uh, the ball is the same as a thirty thousand pound ball. Uh, and then you, if you have the right rig, like you got a big, you know, 3,500 gram or maybe a super good, I don't know where they're at nowadays, but the guys at Big Boys, Ooh. they can pull 30,000. This one's not, this, is a, this isn't a big boy anymore? Well, no. There's bigger boys than this? Bigger. Oh, newly. When are you going to get bigger? Uh, well, uh, you know, my wife said if we got a dually, it be was for divorce. <laughs> so I, I stopped here, guys. Yeah, I stopped, I stopped right there. <laughs> but this one can pull 20,000. All right, so we ready to get this thing installed? Let's install it. All right, so after getting the spare tire out of the way, we are re uh, loosening these three bolts on each side of the vehicle. Um, this is loosening up the receiver, the entire receiver uh, supports, and uh, that'll let us get the super hitch aligned correctly when we bolt it in. All we have to do is loosen here. All right, step one is to fish this bolt with these washers uh, through a hole, and this hole is behind the heat shield uh, for the spare tire. So we're getting that out of the way. Those are two 10 millimeter bolts uh, that are getting out of the way. On the driver's side, um, 
no such problem. We're able to just use that hole right there. All right, I got a couple of steps here done. I got this front side strap uh, bolted in. Um, you got this, this bolt here. It actually comes through the frame. Um, so you gotta fish it in through there. They actually give you a nice fishing tool to kind of help you grab hold of the bolt uh, in order to get it through uh, the frame. And the other thing that I did is put this bolt in through here as well. Um, it has a rectangular washer on it. Um, again, you can use their fishing tool to fish um, up through this hole and then come back down through here or you can do it manually. Um, either way will work. And for this rearward most hole, you have to take this two inch square plate fish it up over the bolt. Um, they actually ask you to put a tool in here to keep it from sliding forward, but let's see what happens when if I just drop it and there it is right there and it's coming in and voila, bingo, centered. So just like the previous steps, you're using a two inch long bolt, half inch diameter, um, and you use this fishing wire here um, with the star washer. Uh, and we are now gonna fish this up through for this last hole. Uh, this is the same hole that we just dropped that two inch square plate in. And just like that, that's super easy. Um, all the previous bolts that we did were also the same half inch bolt, two inch long, grade eight bolts. We got the side plate lifted up into place after dropping those bolts down through the frame. Now we got to manage to get nuts uh, onto those bolts. And it goes washer, washer, lock washer, and nut on there. You might want to just get a couple threads on there. Hold it. All right, and then connecting the front plate to the side plate. Uh, you got to pivot it up. Uh, this is the passenger side with the heat shield for the spare tire. And you can see we have the driver's side all set up as well. Now here's the rear side strap being bolted in. So putting on the rear side strap, you put through the new M16 bolt through the bracket that is stock, that has a nut in it. And on the inside of the frame, you're putting a big uh, plate in here to cover up the rest of that nut. A fender washer that's 3 16 thick, along with a lock washer, and then a nut to finish it off. And that will then wrap up the strap installation. We're leaving everything loose for now. So I just finished wiping down the top of the super hitch here. Uh, made sure that it's nice and dry, nice and clean. Using this uh, UHMW strip um, to mount onto the top of the super hitch. I imagine that this ends up getting squished in between this and the existing stock hitch. How they actually All right, so you can see we've added um, these four bolts uh, coming into the cross member, the actual hitch itself. Um, we've added extra washers uh, onto the inside and the outside where we can. The instructions don't don't show do, doing the extra washers, but, but where, where we can, we're putting extra washers in. Um, if the washer, if there's a weld that gets in the way of the washer, then we're not putting it on in that case. To connect the super hitch down here in the front of the, uh, the chain the, the hitch. We're going to jack this up into place so that way we can use the one and a quarter inch long grade five bolts. Um, 
with the 3 16th washer. And then a big fender washer on the bottom as well. So to get the super hitch aligned, uh, we took the shank and we got it vertically aligned the best we could and then got the shank inside of both receivers and then tried our best to get that aligned uh, by pushing the shank around in order to move those hitch pins or even just to get them in. We found once we got them in that uh, they weren't moving so smoothly and so in order to find center, what we did was we got a floor jack on there. Uh, and jacked it up until those pins were both very easy to move in and out. As you can see, this guy moves easily in and out, uh, as does the other side. Um, moves moves pretty easily. I mean, like, you know, it, it does it does all right. Um, and uh, now with it jacked in place, we're gonna make sure to hold it there. Uh, we are going to then torque everything down, and these eight bolts that take the cross member of the hitch and, and mount them to the side plates, uh, those are going in at 75 foot-pounds. These top bolts going up into the frame, these were a little bit challenging. Um, they give you washers or star washers that um, help lock it uh, in place because you're putting the bolt in at the top of the, in at the frame and coming down to the bottom and putting a nut at the bottom. Um, but if you're, in, in both cases, you're able to get a very fingertip on the bolt head and that's just enough to let you get enough pressure um, on the nut so then you can start tightening it. And here we are now torquing these and all the rest of these bolts, after those first eight were at 75 foot-pounds of torque, all of these last bolts are all at 60 foot-pounds of torque. And so now we're just getting the last of it. There we go. Back here, Gary, you've been working on putting in the adapter to go from the shank to the ball. I guess that's called a ball shank adapter? Shank ball adapter? I think it's called a ball adapter. Ball and shank adapter? Kind of something like that, Gary. Something like that. All right, well, tell us how you got it all set up. Well, um, you know, I had to figure out, we don't know if it's the right height right now. We just we have to dress it for a trailer, basically, right? So I went ahead and put it in. Um, there's a uh, there's spacer, or um, what do you call this? washers and spacers right here you see those down in there but I kind of figured that out because you gotta you know they're not sure what it's going to go against like maybe not to the shank but it does so I set it right here and then I tightened the bottom bolt back here to seat it so that's that's really basically the number of washers that you go in there from. Um, I've torqued them down just enough that they're safe for now we'll torque them down really good when we actually get the trailer and figure out the right height. Um, and this, uh, this is a 30,000 pound ball. So this is a 20,000 pound adapter. Uh, I torqued that pretty good. Got the big old wrench and pulled on it pretty good. Did you use a cheetah bar on it too? No, we can do that if you want. All right, yeah, let's hit it harder. I'll hit it harder. Um, right, so this thing can move up and down. We could actually go down two more if we had to. I just have no idea where. What's the process to know where the right height is? Well, we got to get the trailer loaded and figure out where we're, because different trailer heights, right? So when we put it on and we get some, about the right amount of tongue weight on there, right, we'll, we'll adjust and see whether we're right, yeah, too high, too low, I think. 